cheap, abundant grid power makes us take so many things, so many luxuries for granted here in the United States. It's so hot out. I am drenched through. Overheated. The heat is getting to me. But before that cheap grid power was available, our ancestors really had to innovate to stay comfortable. If you're going off grid, deep pockets can solve a lot of problems. But if you don't have unlimited funds, a lot of these same innovations that our ancestors used can still work for you today. Almost one year ago today, I decided to take a 24 volt radiator fan and mount it on a gable end of my cabin to act as a whole house fan. The fan works awesome and it's a total lifesaver. But then I started thinking, what if I could make the fan come on automatically whenever the air outside is colder than the air inside? Let's go back in time and recap what's happened up to this point. I'm gonna link that video and if you're new to the channel, I've got videos of building almost everything in this house uh, from the door to the countertop to the outdoor shower, the solar awnings, installing solar. Everything I've done almost is on video. So if you're interested, feel free to go back to my channel and check those videos out. Well, we've got another rainy day here at the cabin, so we're gonna do some inside work. We're gonna make a whole house fan out of a radiator fan. Right. So I got this uh, radiator fan through Amazon and uh, I hope you can hear me over the rain. So we're gonna case this in and wire it up. This is a 24 volt version. I'll put a link to a 12 volt version. power from this fuse block right here upstairs <laughs> oh i can't believe that just happened put this fan right in here. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Wrong end. Okay, there we go. see it come out up there. Okay, let's test out this switch down here. Okay, let's check this thing out. Test out this switch up here. Seems to work good. All right, well it started raining and the air outside got really cold. So I turned on this fan and it's making a huge difference. You can feel the cold air coming in the windows and the hot air up on this roof is just getting sucked outside. It, it really works. Here's my controller. 
I ordered it on Amazon. I think it was $13. And it's got a little knob. We've got to put these on our M positive and M negative. And All right, let's see how this thing works. Well, there you go, any level of noise you want. It's still running. I mean, I doubt you could even hear this from 10 feet away. Could probably go a little lower. Yes, yeah, still running. Or if you want it to work fast. Medium speed. Low speed. So we're in the control room and we need to figure out how to do the programming to make this fan work on its own. And that's where the sponsor of today's video comes into play. Fortunately, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, which is important because making this fan run based off of two temperature sensors is a little bit more complicated than I first thought. I started out by taking this class by Mark Fraunfelder, Introduction to Arduino, and it was really good. Hi, I'm Mark Brownfelder. I'm the founding editor-in-chief of Make Magazine at Technology Project Magazine. Today, I'm going to teach you about the Arduino. What I like about it is I like the way Skillshare is organized. Um, everything's indexed. The classes are to the point. Um, when you're learning on a YouTube video, you never know how much crap you're going to have to sort through before you get to what you want to know. Everything is well organized in Skillshare and there is loads of info. Uh, you have to be careful if you like to collect skills because you can easily go down a rabbit hole. I started out learning Arduino. I took a couple more courses on that. Then I started looking at photography courses and then I realized uh, my video editing is probably not as good as it needs to be. So I started taking those courses and there's just so much on there that you can discover. Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to the first thousand people who click the link in my description. If you like it, it's only about $10 a month after that. I'm going to use this. I have a real hammer. Okay. What were that? You know, <laughs> is it filming? Yep. This, oh, there's a knot there. Just, just... Is that... oh, oh, block, block in the camera. No block, no block in the camera. Is this gonna... Why are you taking it? Oh, there you go. Yeah. Does it go? How does it go? Yeah, that should work. Like that. Yeah. And that's the top. I don't know. So, yeah, it says bottom. Look at that. <laughs> it will not self tap into pine. Are you pushing hard? No, because I don't want it to slip off and bash into that, whatever that thing is there. It looks important. There, there we go. There you go. Oh, we didn't plan that out very well, did we? Oh, that has to go over there. It's fine. What'd you do? I hit the temperature probe. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Before we it's bend all it. right if it's bent, right? Let's just see if it works. If I bend it back, do you think it'll break off? All right, it works. <laughs> this red wire right here with this 15 amp fuse powers the fan. So we're gonna tap in to that red wire yep. and we're gonna bring power up to this relay. 
How many amps can this relay handle? Uh, I think it's, it should say on there, I think it's 15 amps. All right. Okay, so this one wire that I've, I've just connected is to the common to the relay. And then we're gonna take, so that's power from the power source to the relay. And then we're gonna take power from the normally open back to the wire that brings power to the fans. Is the fan switched on or no? The, fu the fan is switched on, but the fuse is pulled. But I mean, the, the three-way switch has it on? Yeah, the three-way switch is on. Okay. Right. Check that switch. <laughs> and then if you, uh, if you hit set. Oh, cool, it's working. So this is this is the inside sensor. So I can I can turn it on just by warming it up. Alright, so it says it's 84 inside because we're artificially making it warmer. And it came on. Okay. Now I'm holding the sensor that's gonna go outside. Now if I if I heat this up so that it's warm outside, it should turn off. As soon as the outside temperature reads higher than the inside. There it goes. So now it's turning off. So there our fan is automated. This one here is our outside sensor. We're just gonna drill it right through where I did my battery vent, right next to that. Um, we're gonna go outside and do that right now. I know you want it. Where are we going? Put it, try and just like right it there. Oh, you will? Okay. I don't think it went through all the way. I'm gonna come in right next to it. Yeah, just come in next to it. About a half inch over. Uh, someone gave you too small of a drill bit. I'll get another one. All right, here we go. Try that. Oh, that looks bigger. There we go. Uh, you know what? Can you can you grab it? Yeah, it's actually. It's kind of hitting the little plastic coating. That's all. That's that's all right there. All we want it. Yeah, you don't need to go anymore. Cool. All right, it should come on here pretty soon. Ryan, it stopped working. <laughs> I don't know. It's just not triggering on now. All right, that's what it is. So I was confused. It wasn't coming on. Um, even though the outside is 73 because the temperature is set to 75. So if I do... There it goes. Now it's coming on. Okay, first off, big thanks to my friend Ryan for helping me with this project. I never could have got it done without him. Guys, I'm putting pictures of everything that we use for this project on the screen. I'll also put links in. I won't bore you with the code, but if anyone wants the code that we used, email me at my page, um, and I will send that to you as long as I don't get too overwhelmed. Thank you so much for watching, and please remember to hit like and subscribe if you're into this kind of thing. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next week.